you know, just because you can do something doesn't mean you always should. I look around myself and other people and these days for some reason, I tend to look in between them, the forces that operate in between each of us, some light, some dark. And it is the dark forces that drive us down a path of madness. And it leads some to do things like this. A xenobot. What in the world? See what happens when you leave people alone in a room? It even has a name a teenager would make up. And after I tell you how it works, you will think it was some teenage scientist who put this together. All chokes aside, this is where we are at. And keep in mind, this has already been done in several different ways. How far have they come? You know, I read a story once where this happened before a long, long time ago. Something like some people or beings came along and tried to create their own beings. And that as a result, God had to destroy everything with a flood. Now look at this thing. I mean, what do they think they are going to do with this? Make a... Make frog people? Actually, I wish it was that simple. But where they want to go with this, it doesn't feel right. If that makes sense. So let's get into these xenobots. I know some of you may be interested to know just what makes these things tick. So there are two sides to this. There are those who are excited about this type of research. And then there are those who understand that, wait a minute, this steps outside the boundaries of both creation and evolution. And I think neither God nor nature wants us making our own animals. And no, I'm not talking about breeding animals. This is what I'm talking about, xenobots. But it's not a robot, is it? Xenomol is more like it, or how about abomination? What possesses a person to sit in front of a microscope and painstakingly and meticulously stitch together a microscopic Franken animal? This is a computer designed, something man made by the way, a computer designed organism of completely regrouped transplanted stem cells. But let me back up a moment and talk about this computer. At the University of Vermont, there is what's called VAC, Vermont Advanced Computing Core, where they have just recently upgraded a computer system called Deep Green. And this is how they describe it. A new massively parallel cluster composed of over 70 GPUs capable of over eight petaflops of mixed precision calculations based on the NVIDIA Tesla V100 architecture. Its hybrid design can expedite high thoroughput artificial intelligence and machine learning workflows. And its extreme parallelism will forge new and transformative research pipelines. They also say, just to give you an idea of the computer cluster's power, that it can achieve a speed of over one petaflop or 1,000 million million computations per second, the equivalent of 20,000 laptop computers working in tandem. Now we have Dr. Josh Bongard who 
is a professor graduate student advisor whose expertise is in evolutionary robotics, computation and physical simulation. And what that means is his research is based on the idea that there is something more than just the brain controlling the body and memory and that the body plays a major role in intelligence, which is of course something you would want to understand better especially when applying this to the science of engineering artificial intelligence. So one of the other leaders of this project is Dr. Michael Levin, who is director for the Center of Regenerative and Developmental Biology at Tufts University. And you have a few other people involved. So here's what they did. They created an algorithm to come up with the best design for a new life form based on certain directives of locomotion. In other words, it's like saying, I want the best design for an organism that only moves forward. And what the deep green machine does, it builds and rebuilds a biological map using a combination of skin and cardiac cells from African frog embryos, the stem cells. So let me just say this. You have to pay attention to what they are telling you and what they are not telling you. So you're not a frog. The reason they are using frogs is because they tend to be the easiest cells to manipulate. Think of it this way. If you wanted to create an organism that could go in and reprogram DNA, you would use frog cells. I'm not trying to be funny, but there was a reason that was in Jurassic Park, folks. You know what I do find funny? That when the research is presented to the public, there is always a mention of ethics. What ethics? It's already been done. I don't remember all of us agreeing to man making up their own beings. Did any of you agree to that? You know, some people could consider a frog to be food, but there is a big difference between eating a frog and cutting up a frog and piecing it back together to form some monster. Oh, because it's microscopic, it's not a monster? And the thing regenerates? You know what it is? It is John Carpenter's The Thing. Just imagine this thing the size of a human or a larger animal. Just going around eating everything. And it regenerates? <laughs> Am I being too hard on them? I'll stop joking around. Here's the problem. And it always has been a problem. We don't have what it takes to create life forms from scratch. We can defile them, taking them apart, putting them together. We can engineer hybrids. We can crossbreed, mix breed, even clone life forms to a degree. You see, we cannot just piece together our own life forms because it's not sanctioned. It's not, it's just not allowed to be here. That's why these things die quick. And these are frog cells. Human cells are quite different. But this, you know what this reminds me of? Those old late night infomercials. It moves in all directions. It collects garbage. It unclogs arteries. And it regenerates. Kind of like a teaser you put out to get investors and other scientists who are interested or have ideas. So yeah, once they are able to confidently construct these things enough to where they could showcase them, that's just what they did, put it out there. But I don't believe this is anything to really get excited or concerned about. Lord knows what other institutions have going on. And I can imagine that they are way past the point of making frog tissue move. I can bet the government dictates how far they are able to go with this. And they will probably get compartmentalized and whatever research they come up with will be applied to a more creative objective, should I say. In today's world, we are all going to have to use great discernment when it comes to what we see and hear in terms of news. You just constantly find nothing but a bunch of mixed reviews of everything on the internet. And the conspiracy theories on this are going to fly in. Now, I've said before, watch out for when they say something is the first. For example, this comes from an article published in IFL Science. Researchers from the University of Illinois have produced a 
new generation of muscle-powered biological robots or biobots that can be stimulated to walk using electrical impulses. These robots not only represent a significant advancement in the field of soft biorobotics, but they may also eventually have uses in a variety of applications including drug screening and delivery systems. The study has been published in PNAS. Then it goes on to read, in order to produce these centimeter scale robots that are capable of locomotion, the team combined 3D printing with tissue engineering. Bashir's group first demonstrated the capabilities of this technology with a bio robot produced using living heart cells from rats. As the cells contracted, the robot would move or walk along a surface in fluid. Unfortunately, however, these robots were limited in their usefulness given the fact that the cells were constantly beating, so they couldn't switch the robot off. You see, now how many of you have heard of the Plasmobot 10 years ago? How far have they come? This is what they said about the Plasmobot back in 2009. This new Plasmodium robot called Plasmobot will sense objects, span them in the shortest and best way possible, and transport tiny objects along pre-programmed directions. The robots will have parallel inputs and outputs, a network of sensors and the number crunching power of supercomputers. The plasma bot will be controlled by spatial gradients of light, electromagnetic fields, and the characteristics of the substrate on which it is placed. It will be a fully controllable and programmable amorphous intelligent robot with an embedded massively parallel computer. Professor Aramatsky says that there are long-term potential benefits from harnessing this power. We are at the very early stages of our understanding of how the potential of the plasmodium can be applied. But in years to come, we may be able to use the ability of the mold, for example, to deliver a small quantity of a chemical substance to a target, using light to help to propel it. Or the movement could be used to help assemble micro components of machines. In the very distant future, we may be able to harness the power of plasmodia within the human body. For example, to enable drugs to be delivered to certain parts of the human body. It might also be possible for thousands of tiny computers made of plasmodia to live on our skin and carry out routine tasks, freeing up our brain for other things. Many scientists see this as a potential development of amorphous computing, but it is purely theoretical at the moment. And back then they said, oh, this is the first time too. They've been playing around experimenting with small biorobotics for a very long time. We truly do not know how far along they have come with this type of technology and to what degree it has already been applied or released among us. But we can look at these examples and see that, yeah, they do have the capability to bring some of these things into existence. Soulless beings under our complete control. Living tissue surrounding a robotic consciousness. And as well being as some of the people involved may seem to be, none of this stuff is beyond weaponization. I hope you enjoyed this brief look into the world of biorobotics. Keep yourselves tuned in because there is more to come. Xenobot. I know I've heard that name. Sounds familiar. Xeno. Xeno. Was it this? Oh, no, wait. It was this.